Okay, so we're trying this podcast on this new day. Today is Monday, the 14th of August. And talking about the, uh, the fallacy of worrying about money. And this is, of course, coming from personal experience. I've been worrying about money for, I don't think it's been my whole life. I think it's maybe been maybe the last 10, 13 years. So it's been a long time. And I've learned a lot about how silly that is. Not because money isn't important and because we need it to live and because I haven't had reasons to worry about it, but I've realized how it's only damaged my mind, my emotions, my nervous system, my body, my all these things. And I have found a different way to deal with money. And that is to realize that money is just coming to me and it always has because God is faithful. And because the Bible says, ask and you shall receive, seek and you shall find, knock and the door will be open. And that's always been the case. Now, there have been times when I have told myself that I was broke and I wasn't that I was gonna be homeless and that never happened, that I was going to lose our house and we weren't even close to that. We always found a way. And I look back and I realize how damaging, how silly, how foolish the Bible says it is to worry about money. Because the only reason why I worried about it is because it wasn't as much, excuse me, it wasn't as much as I used to have. I, I have less than I used to have. And so, or I was unemployed. And so obviously, right? But even then, the lie was that I would never make money again or make as much. Where the truth is that there's so much money to be had. And more is coming my way and God is providing every day more abundantly more than I could ever dream or imagine I could imagine a million dollars and yet the Bible says that he's going to give me more than I could even dream or imagine so more than a million dollars okay Lord wasn't asking for much but your word is true because he cares for us because he loves us because he knows our needs I, I'm not a materialistic person, but I enjoy, like, I think everyone, nice things. I want a Tesla. I don't have, I have an old car. It breaks all the time. All our cars are old. They're 10, 15, 20 years old. I wear clothes from five years ago, <laughs> 10 years ago. But there are a few things, maybe a guitar every five years, maybe a, a car every 10 years that I want to have the freedom to, to buy. And, but realistically, even beyond that, I would say that my money worries come down to provision and giving. I want to be able to give more. We always give, even when I've been unemployed for years or for a year or for whatever. When we were making more money, we gave more, 10, 15, 20% to the church and to people that we love. When we had less, we would give 10%. So even when we, when we had little or half of what we used to have, let's say, we were still generous. But I worry about not being able to give generously the way I want to give. I would love to be a philanthropist. I feel like that's part of my calling. And that's why I am committed and I know that wealth is coming to me and to you. Because I know that God knows my heart. Of course, the Bible says to be aware of the love of money. I don't love money. I want to give more. Philanthropically, if that's a word. <laughs> and it's something that we've done, Rochelle and I, our whole lives. We've always given generously. Like I said, 10, 20, 30% of our income. And it's, that's why God has blessed us. And that's why people have given us so many gifts when we were in need. And that's why God 
is going to keep blessing us. Now, right now, I'm not where I want to be. But the lie is that I have to worry about that. That somehow I have to stress and be anxious about how am I going to make money and when is this going to happen? Instead of realizing that it's going to happen because it's already done. It's who I am. It's what God has gifted me to do. It's what I've always seen in my life. He's never seen the righteous. The Bible says, go poor or be in need. And we, it's not something that God owes us, no. But we've committed to a life of righteousness. And so his grace has always been sufficient. And every goal that I have, whether it's a car or whether it's to give 20, 30% to people in need, our church, etc. It's, it's going to happen again, because it's always happened. And during the times like right now, or maybe not now, but let's say in the last year or two, that I have been so anxious and worried about money, I realize how silly that is and how useless you could say that is. How foolish, as I said, because God already did it there's already a place and i've already seen the signs whether it's a church or business or a combination of 10 not 10 two three four things that are that together are going to create the wealth that i know is coming to me it's done because it's what my mind is focused i don't mean like i'm as i said loving money it's what i know is is how God works in my life. I've always seen it. It's what God wants for me. It's, I already know what I'm going to do with it, like we've always done with that abundance. There isn't a seed of envy or pride or materialism or wanting more. The sin actually is worrying, not being materialistic. If, if I do have a sin when it comes to money, is that I worry about it. And that's what's wrong. The Bible is clear. Do not be anxious. Do not worry about tomorrow. Instead, ask, seek, knock. And I just know God has always miraculously provided everything that I have that God's provided. Whether it's these cameras, this home, our cars, more than anything, my beautiful wife and kids, and putting them through college, having all that we need, et cetera, et cetera. And it hasn't been just, oh, me, I'm smart, I'm in, I'm blah. No, it's been the grace of God. It's been God just saying, here you go, son. This is what I want for you. Take it and use it for my glory. This house, we've called it the house that worship built, because this house, as I've mentioned before, was built through worship. God has given me a gift. When I'm vibrating or in my zone of genius, when I'm at a high level of anointing, of vibrating, of being in my zone of genius, blessings come my way. Guitars, houses, recording gear, connections, being in meetings that I never thought I'd be a part of. And more is coming. There's so many stories that I have that I'll share with you maybe in the next episode of how I've seen God manifest everything I have. God's been the one who's blessed me. If you think of the law of attraction or manifestation, it's God who's done that. It's God who's blessed me. It's God who's looked at me as his son and said, this is just what I want to do for you, son. Here you go. Now, what's been my responsibility are at least two things, maybe three. One is to be faithful. Two is to be vibrating at a high level, meaning to use my gifts to the best of my ability. Mainly, that is worship and teaching, teaching the Bible, mentoring, coaching. And then third is to be generous, to give, to serve, to be humble, just to give it all away. Maybe I'll close with one thing. Two years ago or so, when I lost my income and I went from, let's say, from 10 to zero, I was so worried. 
I got all kinds of aches and pains and anxious nights and sleepless moments, you name it, right? But I always knew and I always told God that when I got my first big check, and it hasn't come yet, that I would buy myself a Nord Stage 4 now, keyboard, those red keyboards, 88 keys, maybe 72. It's my dream keyboard. I had it for a couple of weeks, borrowed, and I love it. It's $5,000, $6,000. I don't have the money, but today I was playing at a friend's church. They don't have a Nord, but they have this baby grand. Everywhere I go, whether it's a school or a church to play or a place to serve, they always have these amazing keyboards. They don't belong to me, but God is saying, look, son, look, look how this is all coming your way. That keyboard that you want, it's on its way. You know how like the Amazon truck, you can see it? It's, it's on its way. Just wait a little longer. The timing is not up to you. You have to wait, trust me, but it's coming because it's done, because it's who you are. It's what you manifest. It's what you believe in. It's what you're asking for. So I'm going to give it to you. I know it's going to bless the nations. I know it's going to be used for my glory. So here you go. And whether it's someone gives me that keyboard for free as a gift, whether it's I'm at a church and they have it there and I can borrow it, whether it's someone has a studio and there it is, or whether I get my big, amazing, excuse me, paycheck and I buy it cash or whatever, I know it's coming. Now, the old me or the usual me is worried, forgetting completely about a keyboard and just thinking about, oh, how am I going to pay for gas and college and a microphone or the house and all these things that are just so ridiculous. God's saying, son, why are you so worried? Look at the fields. Look at what I've already done. Look at my faithfulness. Look at who you are. Look how much I love you. And one day, that keyboard is going to happen. What I think we are responsible to do is to verbalize, to speak our dreams and our, and our destiny into existence. We have to speak it. I think it's Revelation 12, that it says that the way we defeat the enemy is through the word of our testimony. We have to speak. And so when my father said to me a long time ago, son, what kind of guitar do you want? I said, oh, I just want a guitar. He said, what color? How many strings? How big? Where from? What, what brand? And he taught me from an early age, I was maybe in my early 20s, to be specific. So right now, I'm being specific about salary, income, the kind of things that I want, the, the, how, how much I want to give, what percentage, the kind of house, second, third, fourth house that I want to buy, the car, the Tesla, I already said it, I'm already speaking into these, oh, I want a white Tesla, just the basic one. And I want that Nord Stage 4 keyboard. It costs $6,000. I want a couple of monitors, the Yamaha NSHS8, just little things. And I'm putting it out there. I'm putting it out there into existence, having God here, having the demons hear my, my, my prayers and run so that they're not destroying my dreams and God's dreams for me. And so I'm just waiting for God to just do what he's going to do. That Amazon truck is on its way. Salary, income, whatever. The things that I'm praying for and manifesting and, and attracting, knocking. And when those worries come, because obviously I worry at times, I have to go back to just simply his promises. I'll close with this. We just did a song speaking of music. It's called Yes and Amen. All his promises are yes and amen from 2 Corinthians chapter 2, I believe. That's it. That's the same thing as the law of attraction manifesting prayer. Yes and amen. God's promises for that keyboard in my case, for that Tesla, for that income, for having my business and ministry and coaching succeed and impact millions and, and make millions and impact people at a high level, this content to go viral and to, and to help a lot of young people, people of all ages. Those promises which God has given me are yes and amen. Done. When, how, where, that's up to God. The Amazon truck, what I know, it's on its way. Delayed, perhaps. Later than I expected, yes. Trust the Lord, the Lord. But 
the worry is gone. And when it comes back, I stand against it. So I encourage you to evaluate your money worries and to question them and to say, why is this here? Is it because of a childhood trauma? Because of something that I lost? Because of even religion, right? Saying, oh, don't think about money. And should I question my negative beliefs about it? And instead of thinking negatively about money, and if I am worried about it, how can I turn that morning into dancing? By believing that all God's promises are yes and amen. What is it that you are praying for? Maybe it's not money. Maybe it's health, a husband, relationship, a, the dream job, a car, love, maybe get closer to God, maybe to uh, reconcile with your wife, have a better relationship with your kids, to exercise, have a perfect body, or be in shape, be a great teacher, whatever it may be. All his promises are yes and amen. So leave me a comment below. Let me know your thoughts. Thank you for being here. This is a new format here in my new studio with my new couches here of the Trick Podcast of Joy. We're going to have guests here in the studio. I'm setting up a three-camera shot, some lights, get some fancy microphones. I'm just starting here kind of with the simple, basic stuff. But we're going to keep going, having guests, having people that inspire me, and hopefully will inspire you as well. So look for more content here the Trick Podcast of Joy. Thank you for being here and I'll see you next time. Adios. Adios.